Italians too often look at their neighbor's garden, considering it greener and more beautiful, while ignoring their own, which hides many works and talents to be truly proud of. I am Alessandro Ruo, an Italian Chinese boy, born and raised in Italy, and this is the column Italy, a country of thousands of talents. Together, we will explore everything that has made this country so loved and appreciated all over the world. Today we are in the gallery of Cesare Catania, Italian artist and sculptor. Together we will explore his professional career, his journey as an artist, and his future projects. Follow me. Hi Cesare. Thank you. My professional artistic journey began about 10 years ago. So around 10, 11 years ago, I decided to start doing this as a job. I was born an engineer, and what I learned the most in engineering school is to break down problems and reality into simple shapes, into simple polygons that can be overlapped. This kind of approach leads me to create works which you might see here in the gallery and which are indeed much closer to cubism than to an informal work of art. The techniques that most characterize my traditional works understood as sculptural works are plaster, steel, natural rope, and certainly silicone. Every sculpture, every 3D painting, or any completed work of art has its own minimal design. So it's unlikely that a work of mine would come to life where I just take, throw paint on the canvas and that would be the final result. Of course, it can be done. Everything is perfectly fine. But in my case, let's say it doesn't happen that way because I believe that inspiration when it arrives is often raw. So it needs a little time to settle and it needs a little time to become, as I say, rounded. This here, for example, is Harlequin in the Land of Giants. It is an oil painting on canvas. What is the main meaning? We are all Harlequin running in this chessboard, where essentially the giants, which are the companies, the multinationals play with us. So it is the giants that run, play with chess, with dice, and we run in between trying to navigate through them. For this, for example, I also created the NFT, which is obviously not a copy of the painting. It is a completely different work, a short film of a couple of minutes, and it will probably be exhibited at the AC in Lugano during an international conference on the metaverse. Recently, in the last year or so, I have approached digital art, both in terms of the metaverse as an abstract concept and in concrete terms by creating digital artworks. In my opinion, NFTs and digital art should be experienced by an artist, especially one coming from a traditional background, as an opportunity to develop both their inspirations and to enhance like a sort of booster. Here, the suggestion I might give to an artist today who wants to embark on the activity of digital art is to start thinking without filters to try to open their mind and work with imagination not at 100 percent but at 1000 percent because today the metaverse understood as a parallel reality gives us the opportunity to express ourselves freely and completely and when i create a canvas or a sculpture my physical limit is the physics of gravity in relation to the sculpture or the physics of the canvas understood as the dimensions of the canvas. And when you work in the metaverse, you don't have these issues. You can choose to work on any scale in any dimension, and even with any material, so you can invent materials that may not even exist in nature. An NFT, by definition, is a non-fungible token, so it is a token that is not interchangeable, and is specifically linked to the artistic aspect of the artwork created by the artist. The artist creates a work of art, either digitally or traditionally, and then decides, for example, to certify it or mint it using blockchain technology through a standardized procedure. This one is called The Cage. It is a work I created in 2013, 
and I also made the NFT of it, which, as you will see, is a completely different piece. Well, yes, from a perspective of shapes and outlines, it is the same work, but the NFT of this artwork is something entirely different. It conveys completely different sensations and feelings. This piece, in its physical version, transmits anxiety and unease, while the NFT is almost relaxing, if we want to put it that way. At this moment, I have opened a personal gallery of digital art in a metaverse, and this gallery truly allows the user to engage with a completely immersive reality. There are about 50 works created between digital art and traditional art that are obviously being digitized for the occasion. And there is obviously no need to have a headset, VR or Oculus to navigate. A simple PC is enough. In my opinion, the metaverse can be a great opportunity to get used to connecting with people again in the sense that the metaverse should not be understood as a surrogate reality because the main concern of public opinion is that we will become automatons practically accustomed to living in the metaverse no i don't see it that way i believe instead that the metaverse can be a way to somehow experience reality more fully more consciously more rounded more present because in my opinion we have often been accustomed to living reality in a careless manner without truly perceiving it. The English use the difference between living and feeling, so we need to get used to feeling the reality that surrounds us, not just living. In my opinion, the metaverse definitely helps with this.